So the Icelandic horse is quite unique. They are probably one of, if not the most pure breed of horse in the world. It's the horse that the Vikings brought with them when they when they found Iceland. We, we say that. So they they sailed from Norway or whatever they wherever they came from, and they brought with them kind of the best of the best of their animals. You know, they've been isolated in Iceland for a thousand years. There's no importation of horses to Iceland. There is not a horse been imported to Iceland for a thousand years. We believe that this is what nature created through survival of the fittest, and we don't believe that we can do better with crossbreeding. We think we have a very good horse. So I'm from Iceland. Uh, Iceland is a little island in the Atlantic Ocean. So you can kind of imagine if you're flying from here to, you know, Scandinavia, we are kind of in between. Iceland is actually the size of Kentucky. So, so it's not that big and we only have about 300,000 people there. It's, it has a lot of natural, beautiful places. It's becoming a very, very popular place to go to as far as, as tourism is this the, by far the biggest growing industry there. The biggest misunderstanding is that it's always freezing cold there, which is not. It's called Iceland, but, but when I was in Iceland this winter, it was, it was probably temperature-wise colder here most of the time than it was in Iceland. Also, it doesn't get warm. Good summer day is 65, 70. So, and I try to spend the summers in Iceland, so I escape the heat here as much as I can. I really like spring and fall in Kentucky. I think it's just beautiful. So I feel like I get the best of the both worlds a little bit. I've been riding Icelandic horses since I was five or six years old. And when I was a kid, I always said that my goal is to be a horse trainer uh, and I'm going to live in two countries. I'm going to spend part of the uh, year in Iceland and part of the year outside of Iceland and, um, and, and, and train horses. And that, <laughs> that's kind of what I'm doing now. <laughs> it worked out, I guess. Here on the farm is kind of like, like my center. This is, this is where we, um, uh, we train. We, uh, I do some teaching here, um, I, I sell horses here. I also travel quite a bit and do clinics all over the US. Uh, then I also have a farm in Iceland. So I have a few mares and we're, we're start, starting a breeding program there. There's also you know, training happening there, some buying and selling. Because I have a partner in another business called America to Iceland, a company that takes people to Iceland on educational trips where I teach them in Iceland, take them trekking in the highlands, take them sheep roundup, horse roundup, sightseeing, very, very fun trips. And this business is really growing. The first thing I usually point out when it comes to Iceland, course, is the temperament. I think they really have great temperament. I think they're very fun to work with. Then they're full of common sense. And therefore, they're very enjoyable too. They are, in general, very um, confident and, and brave. They are realistically between 13, 2 and 14, 2, 3 hands, something like that. They are, even though they're a little bit low to the ground, they are they're very strong. The muscle system is, is like a horse, not related to a pony. The bone structure is, 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 is much more related to a strong horse than a pony. Stocky build, but we still want them rather elegant, but strong, strong build. They're probably the only breed in the world known to be ridden on five different gates, and that means they are ridden on diagonal gate, lateral gate, and a single foot gate. So that means they can walk, trot, and canter. They can also do a gate we call tote, which is a single foot, four beat gate. And then many horses have the fifth gate we call flying pace. That's a, a lateral race gate, where they can reach up to 35, 40 miles an hour. The road system developed kind of late in Iceland, so they were used as a ridden transportation. When you have a horse for a ridden transportation, you don't want a bouncy horse, right? You're going far and you're going over mountains and stuff. So, so you want a smooth horse, and, and uh, that's kind of what developed the gates. The tult is the gate that is used by far the most, by the, especially by the pleasure riders, where they want to go trekking or, or, or trail riding or whatever. Tult is the gate that is usually the gate of choice. Tult definitely has, has different speeds to it. It can be anywhere from, from very slow, like just above walk, uh, to, to extremely fast. What makes it so smooth is only one leg hits the ground at a time, so there's no suspension. Uh, there's only one leg hits the ground at a time, and there's always one or two legs on the ground. Because of the breed, Iceland horse being the only horse in Iceland, we've created this huge uh, variety, right? Very typically, other places in the world, early on, we had specialization, right? If you wanted a jumper, you'd get a jumping horse. If you wanted a dressage, you get a dressage horse. A racehorse, you get a racehorse. And those worlds don't mix that much. 
But when you only have one breed and you want to do it all, you kind of have within that breed different different kinds of horses are suitable for different things. So within the breed, you can find a suitable horse for pretty much whatever you want. And they have quite a bit to offer. And um, like I said, power, energy, flashiness, you know, you can go within that same breed, you can go anywhere from the family horse, the kids horse, up to a, <clears throat> a very flashy, powerful, energetic show horse. But the other thing that's quite amazing is that powerful show horse that you, you we take to a, a performance and we go 35 miles an hour flying pace is the same horse I would put my five-year-old daughter on and lead her around the barn. Like my main show horses are usually my best riding horses too. It's been a goal for a long time to be able to create a semi-professional show team with my peers from the Knights of Iceland. They were never really knights in Iceland, but we consider ourselves the first ones. We started just taking part in shows like Equine Affair Passionata, it came from Germany, and uh, the World Equestrian Games. With the main goal of promoting us and the breed, it's a lot of fun to be a part of it. In the US, they're registered between four or 5,000 Icelandic courses. That's it. In Canada, I think about the same though. Um, I think there's, just to give you an example, I think there's about 60,000 in Germany alone. So um, we are just starting here. I just want to see the breed keep growing. I want to see people realize what a great horse it is. I have no doubt in my mind that, that, that the breed will grow here, just like it has any, everywhere else. I feel like I, I've I kind of dedicated my life to this, and I would love to just see it grow as long as I live. <laughs>